this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this. It is an LRP300 paper tape punch and reader. In the previous videos I got as far as restoring the punch, getting the electronics basically working. I don't know if there uh, may still be faults in the electronics. Um, but uh, I got as far as getting it to start to punch characters uh, from the terminal. Uh, but I had an issue where it's not properly spacing the rows of uh, punched holes. Um, they're mostly okay, but now and again it will start to bunch up the holes and they're too close together. And um, it's kind of, kind of hard to uh, show this on camera, but the sorts of things I'm getting um, are things like this. I don't know how clear this is coming across, but obviously all the holes should be evenly spaced. And uh, this is obviously just the um, the sprocket holes that are being punched, but they should all look like uh, this section, uh, nice and evenly spaced, and the tape should be nice and flat. Um, but every so often it will start doing this, and not only are the holes um, not evenly spaced, but you can see there's kind of a ridge being formed um, between the adjacent sprocket holes. This is normally caused because the drive sprocket has little teeth on it. If the holes are the wrong spacing, then the teeth go, don't go cleanly into the uh, sprocket holes in the tape and it starts to do this. And um, because it's punching its own sprocket holes, um, in theory, it should be correct. Now, I've been through the electronics, uh, checking that the pulse timing to drive the stepper is correct and um, that'll seem fine, even through periods when it was mis-punching uh, the holes, the timing was correct. Um, so that really comes down to something mechanical and it's kind of hard to resolve issues like this sometimes, they can be quite subtle. This particular machine uses um, DP40 um, type sprockets and belts and so the spacing of the adjacent teeth on the belt is a bit of an unusual value, it's 2.0756 millimetres. So that's a bit strange. Um, but watching the belt uh, using a strobe light, so what I do is I, put, I can't show it on camera unfortunately because the camera and the strobe will start to fight each other. Um, but running this uh, with a strobe light on it highlighted what the issue was and looking at this um, particular sprocket under a microscope uh, again kind of confirmed it. It's hard to see and I can't really show it again on camera, it's, uh, it's quite a subtle problem, but what's happening is the teeth on the belt are not dropping cleanly into the holes on the sprocket. And looking at the sprocket um, under magnification, it's fairly clear why it's doing that, and it's the uh, peaks of the sprocket teeth are starting to break up. Um, the other sprocket's actually fine, there's nothing wrong with this one, but this top one it's made of a kind of bakelite material and over the years it gets fairly brittle and the uh, teeth are starting to break up and it's causing the belt to not always drop cleanly into the hole and when it doesn't drop cleanly into the hole the effective length of the belt changes and it either speeds up or slows down the rotation of the sprocket and because it's trying to punch holes at uh, regular intervals as soon as it starts doing that the next hole will be off as well because it's, uh, the sprocket's in the wrong place. Um, I had a look around and I'd already got a new uh, DP40 belt of the correct length, so I know it's not the belt. Um, had a look around for replacement sprockets and while I could find them, they are ridiculously expensive. I think um, the only place I could really find the two sizes I needed, uh, they wanted $140 um, from the US just to ship them and I think it was another $60 for the pulleys themselves. So what I intend to do is replace both the top sprocket and the lower sprocket with some more easily available uh, MT2 type uh, sprockets. So these are um, very similar in terms of their um, pitch. These uh, MT2s are 2mm pitch as opposed to uh, 2.07. Um, but it does mean that um, I can quite easily get an MT2 belt. In fact, I do have MT2 belts of the correct length. And um, the profile of these particular belt teeth is actually better than the DP40s for this application. 
I've um, picked up a couple of pulleys that have the correct tooth count just to make sure I keep the ratio the same between the stepper motor and the punch head that's important of course otherwise the row spacing will be wrong and uh, the only thing I couldn't find were pulleys with the correct bore um, this punch obviously uses fairly odd uh, sizes especially for this uh, top uh, pulley so I got some pulleys with uh, intentionally oversized uh, balls and what I'll do is take these over to the workshop I'll make some um, inserts for these, drill them out to the correct size, uh, re-tap the, um, the holes for the grub screws and uh, what I should be able to do then is um, refit them to the machine using an MT2 belt and uh, hopefully that will resolve the problem. So um, I'll pop this over to the workshop and uh, be back on camera once I've done that. Okay, so I've got the two pulleys replaced. So I've got the top one bored out and I've drilled it out so it exactly matches the original shaft. I pushed the shaft out of the original pulley, pressed it into this one so it's a press fit and uh, made sure it runs true, and that's fine. And uh, did the same thing with the lower pulley, which I don't think you can quite see. Uh, when you refit these, uh, of course, you do need to align the sprocket um, pulley that runs on this shaft. Not only do you have to align it laterally so it runs in the center line of the sprocket holes that run down the tape, but you also need to make sure that it is rotationally correct relative to the position of the punch pin. That is the position of the first pin on the sprocket wheel that the tape encounters has to be a very specific distance from the punch pin. Uh, obviously the um, this shaft only rotates in discrete steps, 0.1 inches at a time, and it is important that in its starting position the sprocket pins properly line up with the sprocket holes. If you don't do that it will run with the pins trying to effectively punch new holes through the paper as it's pulled through. So I've got all that aligned and um, it seems to run nice and uh, freely. I've checked the alignment both laterally and rotationally, uh, locked it all down, make sure it's tensioned properly. And so what we can now do is see if it will run and punch the holes cleanly. I'll just get the board refitted. We'll power it up and see if we can punch some sprocket holes. Okay, so that's punching holes nice and cleanly, evenly spaced. I'll measure them with a micrometer, make sure they are the correct spacing. Um, they appear to be at the moment, but I'll measure them to make sure they are uh, correct. So that's what we're getting now, nice evenly spaced holes. Uh, no uh, distortion of the paper. If the paper's being kind of distorted or torn, then it means that the rotational adjustments of the sprocket uh, is incorrect. Uh, that looks fine. What we were getting before was this, um, the paper was being damaged and the whole spacing was just kind of random and it was all over the place uh, and moreover when I tried to send data from the terminal program I had the same issue. So what I'll do now is I'll just feed out a bit more of the leader and I'll now send some data from the terminal program so we can see the uh, data coming in. I'll just uh, power up the scope. I'll raise the camera slightly so you can see the scope screen. And I'll now go and send some data from the terminal program and see if it punches successfully. So we can see the data coming in. What I'll do now is enable the punch and see if we get any decent punching. I'll just stop that. Okay, as you can see, the holes are perfectly spaced, they're even, not all bunched up and spaced out and overlapping as they were previously. So I think that is a success. I'll do some more testing with it. Um, I still don't know if it's actually punching the correct data, um, but what I can do now is move on to the reader 
And the way I'm going to go about testing the, uh, the correct punching is I have some test tapes and I'll use those in the reader to re-perforate a tape and then I can read the one I've just made and see if it uh, returns the correct data. It's the quickest way of doing it. You can use a scope or logic analyzer of course but uh, this is just the shortcut route. So as I say what we'll do now is move on to the reader and um, see if that actually works within the machine. Okay so I have the reader dismantled. There's not a great deal in these. Uh, we've got the outer cover. I've given all this a good clean. Um, it was a bit dirty inside and so all we really have is the outer cover, the top cover and then inside there is a small strip of detectors. So it's just nine detector LEDs. Um, light source uh, at the top so there's a light source for each of the detectors and when you close this um, each light source in theory should shine through a hole in the tape and uh, illuminate the particular sensor underneath. If we look underneath we can see that there are different value resistors for each of the um, sensors and that's actually how they're adjusted. Uh, you just change the resistor value so it's a bit of a, a pain to adjust these if it's necessary. Uh, and then the only other thing in here of course is the stepper motor to drive the tape through the reader. And then we just have a top cover um, plate with a, a little aperture mask underneath it. So I've cleaned all this out, I'll get this reassembled, we'll plug it in and see if it actually works. Okay I've got the reader reassembled, it's plugged in just resting in the cradle here and we'll load a tape up and see if it actually does anything. So this is the tape I've just punched. Okay, I'll power up the punch. Press run on the keyboard. Okay, now the LEDs come on on the reader, but um, it hasn't moved. And as previously, the skip and edit LEDs or responses, as we'd expect, but the reader is not actually doing anything. It's not attempting to drive the tape. Okay, so it looks like we have an issue with the electronics that's supposed to be driving the reader. It doesn't seem to be making any attempt to drive the motor, and that could be because it's permanently seen a sprocket hole or uh, something like that. So what I'll do now is start to investigate the electronics that's controlling the reader, and in the next video we'll look at getting the reader up and running and hopefully be able to reproduce a tape.